Folks! Oh, God, where are you all? Eh? Hold on. Test. All right, dude, you guys, you got to check this out. I, I just found this. You guys, I think you're going to think it's super cool. Hold on. All right, check this out. Watch this. Look what I found. How cool is this? Look what I found. Ah. Oh, wait, it's upside down. Sorry. How cool is that? Dominaria Remastered. I own a piece of the Amazon dump history. Is there any, like, paperwork on that? What's the bottom say? Oh, hold on, hold on. What does it say at the bottom? Does it have a date? Um, oh, probably. Not for resale! Ah, never mind. I thought there was something cool on it. All right, Rudy's doing manual labor today. What do you guys got? Oh, we got Misty. Misty showed up early today. I can't, I, I, I cannot believe how early that is. Dude, LSS and Fab is on their game, Home Fries. Uh, let's see here. I want to share. We got Rudy expanding his positions in new magic lately. Uh, all right, so let me do, I'll do like some PowerPoint type of thing. Yeah, hey, yeah, right, so over here we have bullet point number one. No, I'm kidding. So we got um, a little bit of Boulder's Gate draft. I'm in the process of dealing with that. I need a lot more. Uh, streets, that's street cases. Uh, I think it's two or three cases deep. So that's, uh, let's see here. One, two, three, four, five, six. So 12 cases high, 24, 30. That's about 48 cases times three. That's 150 cases. Um, we got Jumpy. Dude, Jumpstart 2022, that's where it's at. If you don't understand the price of that, look it up. So we're trying to build up positions in that. Um, over here. Sorry, guys, for the background. We got a lot of bad weather in Florida here. Uh, we got old Pokemon back there. Uh, Mr. P, uh, base and everything way in the distance. I know, you can't really see it too well there. Um, we got um, we got Misty over here. A couple damage boxes. No big deal. We use those for box openings. Uh, we got some Pokemon on top here. And this is my, I'm expanding in Infinity. Can you guys see that? That's my Infinity position. And then there's Pokemon, more Pokemon. A random Warhammer case. Oh, yeah, and if you guys remember, my kid's bike used to be blue, but he's getting bigger, and I keep feeding him uh, Chick-fil-A, and, um, yeah, he's just, now he has a, he has a red bike. Um, I think that's it. All right, let's talk about what's going on here, folks, shall we? Oh. Woo! Too close, hold on. It's too personal with you all. Oh. Oh. So, Rudy, first of all, don't make fun of me. This haircut cost me $24. Be completely honest. Comment below. I feel like that was the worst investment I made. Like, honestly, what do you think the value of this haircut should have been? $3. $3.69. Seriously. All right, so I hope everyone's been a great day. Weather's bad. I've been doing inventory on uh, pretty much Pokemon, Magic, and Flesh and Blood here. And uh, a lot of hype surrounding. We're going to talk about Flesh and Blood first. I have to admit the hype and the excitement and the amount of you all and patrons asking about Miss Dull Misty is a lot higher than uh, heavy hitters and obviously 10x compared to the quietness of uh, bright lights. So that's very positive and exciting to see that there is a lot of positivity going into this new fab set. So I'm really hoping that kicks off 2024 with a lot of excitement and uh, excited to review all that and do the, the end of the month launch here in about, oh wait, two weeks? We're running the launch because it comes out in uh, like two and a half weeks. So, and I also wanted to film this location because first of all, I wanted to share with, like, I don't want people to fall for the narrative that Rudy's just obsessed with only old stuff. I've been trying to explain to everybody in the last six months how bullish I've been on new magic. And yes, I make videos and I share with you all some of the old magic that I've been accumulating, but I've been doing this shit for like 25 years, man. And a lot of the old magic, again, I went hardcore in the vintage magic starting in 2004, and I went really big in 05, 06, 07. Really big again in 2012 to 2015. And then, of course, my last really big expansion into Vintage Magic was 2017 through 2020. And then I didn't do much of anything. Well, everything I bought in 2021 was obviously overpriced. And I lost probably half the money I paid everybody on. And then I've been in 2024, in this market cycle, um, I, I, I would estimate, again, I told you, 90% of my spend rate and deployment of capital has been in modern new products. You can see in the background here, that, you know, in magic, like, I'm not, I'm not downplaying the volume of new magic I have been buying. My goal is one to 3,000 boxes 
of all Magic draft sets before these things just disappear and all we have are these $130, $150 play boxes. In sets like Boulder's Gate, Streets of Barry Manilow, Copacabana, and of course, the infamous Jumpstart 2022 over there, and we got Unfinity, that giant mountain behind me. I've been trying to explain for a while now that these things have tremendous opportunity. If anyone thinks with inflation, the cost of living, and the expenses of everything, if you don't see the opportunity, and you haven't been in this industry a long enough time, when the market in Wizards is trying to get everyone used to $150 play boxes, if you don't see in question, like, dude, wait a minute, eventually in a couple years when every set comes out and it's a $150 play box, not including specialty stuff, and the insane hype around Modern Horizons 3, nobody, like, the people complaining about the price of Modern Horizons 3 is like this. The people saying just shut up and take literally my wife's boyfriend and take my stepsister out of the washing machine is like that. Like, complaints on price? Yeah, we know it's expensive. Wizards, no, it is what it is. I mean, you can complain at me, complain at your local LGS. Yes, that's just what's going to happen. But when you have the demand for that's coming for this is off the chart. Absolutely off the chart. And then you factor in the supply cuts that Wizard. If you, you don't realize this point, I, I never thought I'd say this. The supply cut print run reductions that Hasbro and Watsi has been deploying is more aggressive and more nasty than even I would do. Like, what the, the behavior they did with Fallout and what's coming with Collector Boxes and Collector Commander, huh, with the new Modern Horizons 3, is like, it's extreme even to literally what's left of Rudy's hair standards, okay? Now again, we got a lot of stability in Flesh and Blood. We got Misty coming out in a few weeks. And I, I think it's, it, if heavy hitters did good, I think Misty's going to probably do 50 to 75% better than heavy. That, that's my current perspective. No, I don't think Misty's going to come out. And I have patrons and you all ask me, Rudy, is Misfil, is, you think if I have to come out, do you, do you think like James Crush print run and like if I buy a box, I can flip it for like three times? No, this is not 2021. I think the boxes are going to come out. And I don't think they're going to tank. I don't think they're going to skyrocket. I think they're going to be just stable across the board. And if you're interested in flipping, you're going to have to crack your boxes and flip singles. If you take that path, you're probably going to do very well if you're looking for short-term movement. And again, there's nothing wrong with that. And remember, a lot of businesses out there, if you're new to TCGs or TCG player, or just even eBay, even if you're an internet sailor, oh, oh, sailor, <laughs> sailor, but anyways, um, I was going to do a funny meme, but I decided not to. Even if you're just a, you need to build your reputation and feedback on these platforms. And a great way to do that is selling single cards and getting your reputation built up. There's nothing wrong with that. So that's the biggest thing coming up. And of course, now I got to mention Pokemon. So next Friday, or this Friday, I don't know when you're watching this video. Uh, middle of the month, we have the new Pokemon Twilight Masquerade set coming out. Supply feels about the same as Temporal. Um, of course, as with everything in life, the market in the Pokemon community has already made up its mind that the new Pokemon set in Twilight Masquerade, you know, a bunch of Pokemon with masks on in Twilight Masquerade. Uh, the Pokemon community, which is always accurate and always right, and if you post a message online, you know they're going to give you nothing but brilliant answers. They've already made the decision for us that the new Pokemon set is complete shit, and it's going to tank, and you shouldn't buy it, and same old thing. You know, it's Scarlet Violet, which is useless. So that's what's coming up. So essentially, the timeline is the big three. We got the new Pokemon Twilight. We got Misty with Flesh and Blood's first entrance in direction into the Japanese. Checking out Japan. Bringing in the anime. Bringing in the Wafu. Wafu? Waffles? Now I'm hungry. Bringing in the waifus and the fancy marbles. And we're going to see how the U.S. market accepts that. So far, it does feel like it's probably going to work. But it's too soon to know. The market will make that decision for us. But early indicators are pretty solid compared to the last few sets. And heavy hitters, I did not think they were going to be able to get more hype than how that went. Because when they revealed heavy hitters in New Zealand with the big Marvel heroes and everything, I was like, dude, how are you going to kind of top that? Are they going to kind of add something else? Um, but the Japanese style with these, uh, I mean, I mean, I'm not going to lie, the characters, the women, the art style, I think it's beautiful. I've always, but you guys know I'm a huge Weiss fan. You guys know everybody out there with, obviously, Jobless Incarnations. We got Azure Lanes and Hollow Lives. You know how Rudy is, Bunko Babes and everything. So um, Rudy's stamp of approval is already very excited. 
and I can't wait to do some box openings on the channel with Misty. So the goal is to have, going in to get the box openings back up on this channel pretty soon with Misty and Modern Horizons 3 collectors, fingers crossed that, or maybe even just a play box, it depends on the supply that we can get. Um, I don't have answers as far as supply goes. Pokemon, I'm probably going to allow up to one or two cases because I've got a ton of it. And simply put, I don't expect most of you all to buy Pokemon cases from me, even if they're 100 bucks a box or $99, even $109. Just as with most Pokemon sets, they come out. Most people don't buy them. Everybody thinks it's shit. And uh, Rudy just gets stuck with it. Uh, Flesh and Blood, I do expect to sell out. Um, we're at around the 700 to 1,000 bundles. And we're going to be doing the same as we usually do. You'll get a sealed case of Misty. I said... You'll get a sealed case of Misty over here with a gorgeous blue boxes that we'll share a little bit later. And of course, you'll get a slab exclusive promo card and the pricing will probably do something like, you know, 90 bucks a box, map pricing times four. So what, 90, 27, 36? And then maybe like, I don't know, maybe 10 bucks or 15 bucks for the graded slabbing and everything. And that's it. That's really all there is to it. And we'll automatically put all these, we'll double box them all and we'll get it all nice and pretty for everybody. And that's it. Um, and then going into next month, we'll have more conversations about the Modern Horizons 3 um, euphoric, uh, crazy hype in the tug of war, people complaining about Hasbro's ripoff prices, and of course, the people who just want as much as they can get. I don't know what the official supplier allocations are, it's too early, so I can't really comment on that. We can speculate, but that seems to be the big three right now. We got some small things in between, you know, the Lorcana, the Weiss, and everything, and of course, you know, Sorcery is like six months away from their first expansion, and everything, so everything's pretty. All the other sets and everything, we got some small, like I said, white sets coming up here in the summer that appear to be pretty... There's a lot of excitement around that, too. We got some little Hollow Live summer chickadoo and little, uh, looks like some chick sets coming up here. So I think that's probably going to be pretty, uh, that's probably going to be met with some pretty high demand also. I wouldn't be surprised. So that's really all I wanted to do. I wanted to go over today. I wanted to share a little bit of the, the point I wanted to film, even though I'm sweating my ass off and I'm ready to call it quits for the day, is I wanted to share... Um, these particular positions I've been building for some standard sets and then I'm going to do another video here uh, a little further that direction and I want to share with you all um, the Phyrexia, the March of the Machine, the Brothers War, Streets, Boulder's Gate, uh, Infinity, what am I missing? I said March of the Machine, oh, Kamigawa, uh, but that's way over there. So I'm gonna, I want to share some of the other new positions and products that I've been buying and accumulating um, similar to collector boxes, I haven't revealed all that, I've been trying to get some cases for me for each set moving forward, um, but the collector box situation has been a lot more difficult, um, Wildsville drained Ixalan forward with a tighter supply, you know, I know patrons always ask me to run sales, and if it does well, they want me to run a second mini sale, but that's usually my personal leftover position, so, that's where things stand, I hope you all enjoyed the short video today, um, uh, conclusion, once again, while the world remains generally in a negative um, attitude towards economies, world ending, negativity, um, a lot of conflict in the world, a lot of inflation, a lot of just bitterness um, around the United States, different cities and states, uh, spend rates of normal customers and families continue to be reduced, uh, inflation continues to take a bite out of people's pocketbook and their budgets, and overall, you know, that kind of attitude is still running pretty firm in the United States. Um, I still think we need another 6 to 12 months before I think some of that kind of attitude is going to start to kind of fracture and level out. Um, but if inflation keeps going and keeps flaring up and everything, I do not think the Fed's going to cut interest rates. I think the interest, I don't think they're going to raise interest rates. I could be wrong. But I think the rates we have now are going to be pretty much what we're stuck with for a while. And the higher for longer is the Rudy's opinion with interest rates in the United States. And that's going to kind of continue to stunt that ability for people to borrow and leverage with cash flow. Because you really can't borrow on margin and, and brokerage accounts against your stocks and investments. Because your interest rate is going to be like 7 to 15%. You really can't do a lot of 0%. You can't get real estate and leverage on flipping houses, remodeling, or rental properties. Because you know, investment mortgages are going to be looking at 7 to 12%. Primary mortgages are still between probably around 8%. And, you know, that kind of uh, thin layer of ice and cold water is going to prevent a lot of movement in the marketplace. I do believe the overall stock market and the old S&P, the old SPY, is going to continue to drip higher. I think we continue to see volatility as everybody, you know, that tug of war of doomsday, the next collapse is coming, versus, yeah, right, look at the earnings, we're going to keep moving forward, the world's not ending. That tug of war is going to continue because we have a really large disconnect right now. 
2024 between the haves and have-nots. It's the worst I've ever seen in my lifetime. And I think the tug of war of people saying how bad it is because of what they experience in their workplace, their local city, town, or state, their friends and family, there's a lot of that financial stress and concern. But the other side of the coin, you have a small chunk of modern society that are involved with these businesses or tied to the internet that are, have so much money or wealth, they're over here spending like crazy, which continues to fuel inflation. So you have this tug of war going on. And depending on what side you're on is going to dictate on how you view the markets, collectibles, magic, flesh and blood, Pokemon, and of course the S&P 500 and Wall Street. Um, but I still maintain the Rudy opinion. 2024 is the new cycle. We did start in November of last year as the first uptick after the bottom October and November. And we are now about seven, eight months into this new bull market cycle and uh, in collectibles after a two year crash. And I think we need another six to 12 months before most people were on board. Therefore, we'll be 15 to 18 months into this new cycle before the average negative Nancy kind of turns that corner. So as the easier money, the easiest money is always made and the largest swings occur before everybody's on board. And right now, when it comes to flesh and blood, when it comes to Pokemon Scarlet Violet, when it comes to new magic, everyone remains still in the United States overall pretty pessimistic across the board. And I don't think it's tied to the card games. I think it's still tied to the spend rate and the pressure that Americans and the frustration, the government, the inflation, the politics. That's right, we do have a big election coming. Aren't we like five months from presidential election? I just realized that. Is it November or no October? Did I miss the debates? Oh shit. Are they even advertising? Wait, is there even... Is that even a thing? I'm so disconnected. So I will continue to do my inventory here. And that's all I really have. I just... I really want to share with everybody... Um, I want to do more different background locations and really d expose or not really expose, I guess disclose... Um, the new products I've been buying into. I've been trying to accumulate so much new sealed product. And I feel like that doesn't fit the narrative of what people on the internet want to hear. Because you're supposed to believe that I'm trying to flush all this out and just buy Black Lotuses. Black Lotus I? L Black Lotus. And that's really inaccurate. Like when I shared a Rudy God book or an old video on this channel, I mean... I barely add to those. I randomly get a card or something I buy from a, a viewer like you all or a patron or something, but I really, not much of that changes. That's just 25 years of accumulation when in reality, this is where all the excitement, this is where the, all the activity, this is where all the money moving, shaking is actually occurring. And I thought that was, uh, I thought it was kind of important to kind of share with you all kind of what this stuff looks like because this, I feel as long as we move in the direction we're going, for another six months to six years, which I believe we will, with some short-term dips, short-term drops in the stock market, some volatility with towards magic, Pokemon, flesh and blood, sorcery, One Piece, Weiss, Lorcana. Uh, there's going to be short-term volatility, but I think the fundamentals remain intact for the next five-year kind of trajectory. And I still firmly believe, and I know it's kind of a weird-ass thing to say, I actually believe, oh, from now to the next five years, there is more opportunity for a percentage growth on sealed cases of Boulder's Flippin' Gate. Can you guys see that over there? I don't know if you can, can you see that? The Boulder's Gate. I don't know if you can or not. I think there's more opportunity for $90 Boulder's Gate boxes to go to two, three hundred in the next five to ten years, which is a massive, like, if Boulder's Gate just goes to 150 that's a huge win. For everybody who bought Boulder's Gate Draft for under 100 That's incredible over the next few years, right? Same thing when I see like Jumpstart 2022. It's 2024. Jumpstart 2022, like, they're not saying, you know what, guys? We need to go reprint all the Jumpstarts from years ago. Like, that's not happening. Now, again, it was a 2022, 2023 bear market item, which means it had an overly generous, and in other words, they fucked up on the print run and made it too high. But that doesn't mean, it just, all it means is more time will be needed to flush out and recalibrate. And if you look at... Like a Jumpstart 2022 box is already like $100 plus tax on TCG Player. Somebody quote below. It could be 90 or it could be a 110 when you watch this. Who the fuck knows? That's over $100 for a box already. And look at the cards. Like the EV on that thing's probably inverted. I wouldn't be surprised if an EV on Jumpstart 2022, if you open multiple cases, I wouldn't be surprised if the EV's over 100 bucks. Over 100 bucks. 
over a hundred bucks a box. Okay. And it's just, there's a lot of opportunity in this stuff. And I feel like trying to buy, what's a good example? A vintage box of, let's pick on Rudy's favorite, Urza Saga for five to $10,000 retail, or even like two, three, four thousand wholesale, depending on the condition. Trying to buy a five to ten thousand dollar Urza Saga box, waiting, hoping it goes to twenty thousand, I feel that is more improbable than something stupid like a hundred dollar, or I guess if you're a Rudy patron, an eighty nine dollar Boulders Gate draft box, doubling up and going to one fifty, one sixty, one seventy, one eighty. Which is more probable over the next couple of years? A product that actually has a bunch of good cards that was overprinted and rejected. And has been going straight up in the last six months. I mean, what's more probable? Urza Saga going from 6,000 to 20? Or 6 to 12? Or that going from 90 to 180? Like, that's those are the questions I ask myself. Same thing with, like, Streets of Capetta, Barry Manilow, Copacabana. Like, that box collapsed for, like, 60, 70. When everybody was just like, oh, it's going to zero, everything's fucked, you know? And that thing's back to, what, 90? And now, you you really don't think a set like Barry Manilow can go from 90 to 150 in the next few years? Like, I see easy paths forward for things like that. And that is the Rudy sales pitch perspective. Now, if you don't agree with me, don't fucking buy it. Just comment below and be like, you heavy bag ball sack hashtag Rudy triple sack. You can't type all that. You know, type something like that. If you don't believe me, don't buy it and just laugh at the video. Make sure you hit your thumbs down on the way out. Otherwise... As always, who the fuck cares? One Chick-fil-A. I'm hungry.